Hey there, it's Olivia Spanner here from Olivia's Catastrophe and happy US Black History Month. As I do every February on my channel, I'm here to give you a list of 20 books by black authors that I have read and really recommend to send you off reading black authors throughout the whole rest of the year. These are going to be a mix of genres and age categories and I just try to do a little bit of everything so that anyone can come away with a recommendation within this list. I'll have content warnings for all of the books in the description box down below in case that's something you need and without further ado let's get right down to 20 books by black authors with black characters that I highly highly recommend. The first book that I want to recommend is The List by Yomi Adegoke. Now this is a literary fiction book which is about a couple, they are a black love couple who are quite popular on social media and they are counting down the days until their wedding. When one day our main character Ola wakes up and she discovers that a list has been posted online and the list is about a certain something and her husband's, her fiance's name is on the list and it's about what she chooses to do and what he also chooses to do as he gets a perspective when they discover that his name is on the list. I read this book in a single weekend. It's incredibly fast paced and the countdown makes it all the more riveting. I was so interested in what was happening, whether he deserved to be on the list or not, and I was very intrigued about how and why they made the choices that they made following discovering the list. Next up, I'm gonna recommend a picture book and that is You Can Do Anything Tyrone by Lenny Henry. And this is a picture book about this young black boy who's spending the day with his grandfather and he tells his grandfather I just can't do it but his grandfather has a message for him which is you can do anything Tyrone and it's just about how you need to put your mind to it you need to imagine you need to put in a bit of effort and you can do anything that you set your sights on and I think this picture book just has fantastic art and colors they're so bright and vivid and beautiful to read but also just the message of to black children that you can do anything is a really important one for them to grow up with and that's why I recommend this picture book so much. I'm also recommending Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Temi O, oh, and this is a young adult sci-fi book which has a range of characters but it's by a black author and has black characters too and it's about these teenagers who are sent or who are chosen and competing to be selected for a space program and in this program they will be the first ones that get sent to a planet that has been discovered that's inhabitable called Terra 2 and it's about how these teenagers are selected, what they do on the journey there and what Terra 2 may be like once they get there in the future. I read this one with my page on book club and I got to discuss it with my sister and it was really really interesting and while our thoughts were quite varied and mixed I do think overall it's one that I recommend for people who like young adult sci-fi and I really liked the character work and the dynamics that they had and the end was quite suspenseful and it was an interesting place for the book to finish. For middle grade readers I'm going to be recommending King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. This is a middle grade book about a young black boy who discovers that he is gay and he knows this but he is struggling to come out to people he's struggling to tell his friends and to tell his parents and also he is starting to feel a relationship or feel feelings for this other young gay boy in his class but it also delves a lot into what it's like for this other boy who is not able to pass to be gay in a household that doesn't seem to accept him for who he is and who seems to be having a really struggling time with this. It talks about what it means to be black and gay and white and gay and I do think it's just really important for middle grade readers to be reading these kind of books with their parents and this was also a very emotional book because at the same time our main character is grieving for his brother and he doesn't know what his brother would think if he decided to come out or not so it has a lot of heavy emotions that it's dealing with but it does it all in a beautiful manner with a bit of a metaphor to it and it was just such a lovely middle grade read. Switching back to adult literary fiction, I have to recommend Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid which was one of my best books of 2023 and this is a book about a black woman who's just trying to get by in life and she is the nanny for this family, a white family and when they call her to nanny during a late night emergency she goes to the food shop with the young little white girl that she looks after and people think 
think that she's kidnapped this child and called the police. And this is very much just the beginning of the story. It goes in a lot of different directions and avenues. It talks about white saviorism. It talks about fetishization and it also talks a lot about these microaggressive ways in which racism can manifest in the present day that are very hard to detect but can feel a bit gaslighty when you're experiencing them and I think this book was just a masterpiece in how cleverly and how quietly it probed into all of its themes with a main character that almost seems passive but entirely is not at the very same time. For the short story collection readers I'm going to be recommending The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filior and this is a short story collection that involves in some way or form black women and the church whether that's something they go to regularly whether it's something they kind of vaguely go to because they need to and whether it's just like a culture around them that they are involved in and this one follows women who are black and queer and who are getting up to all sorts of things and each and every single one of these short stories really did such a good job of feeling complete or feeling whole but delving into and exploring an avenue of black culture of black life of black queerness and I just thought it was fascinating how all of them were so different from each other but at their core have stayed with me I can recall quite a lot of these short stories vividly and it takes a lot for a collection to do that which is why I really recommend this one for non-fiction readers I'm going to be recommending you read Brit Ish by Afua Hirsch this is a non-fiction book that explores black British culture colonialism history and racism here in the UK I think there are a lot of very good and very worthwhile reading black books on racism that are non-fiction that are US focused and so I personally as someone from the UK been looking for more UK centered ones and this one fulfilled everything that I wanted it to. While Afua Hirsch does talk about her own experiences growing up black in the UK she also mingles it with a lot of really solid and important research on our history on how we are dealing with colonialism and how it manifests in the present day in a way that feels very applicable and relatable but also talks about classism as well and all of that was really fascinating and I think incredibly well written. Lots of insights here. Next up I have a recommendation for all the poetry lovers and that is Content Warning Everything by Akweki Amezi. It's no secret of mine that I am a big fan of Akweki Amezi and so I had to try their poetry collection and what I particularly love about this poetry collection is the poems that have to do with Christian imagery where Akweki Amezi imagines themselves as a godlike figure. They imagine themselves as a sibling to Jesus who is also a son of God and relating to Mary as the mother and Magdalena as their girlfriend and I quite liked that. I thought it was very creative, I thought it was very unique and all of those poems and how these figures interacted with the persona within the poems was really really fascinating and as someone who is religious myself I do find books with like religious imagery and concepts to them quite intriguing and I think how that was balanced in this poetry collection and woven in was really really fascinating but there are also several of other poems which vary in length that have to do with race and identity and love. For the young adult mystery readers like me I recommend Promise Boys by Nick Brooks. I've recommended this several times on my channel before. It's a young adult book where these boys go to this very prestigious school that is very strict on its rules and when the headmaster dies three black boys are pinned to it as the people who have committed the murder. However all of them believe they are innocent and they are working hard to prove that they are innocent and that they did not do this themselves and I thought it was really fun. I raced through it. In this one you get the perspective of each of the boys but you also get the brief look at what other people are thinking on the situations and the evidence being uncovered and get other students and bystanders thoughts and feelings on the matter and I really liked how it had that mixed media format to it. I really liked each of the characters, all of them show a slightly different perspective, one of them being a basketball player who is from a kind of underprivileged area, one who is Latin and black and really dreams of opening a restaurant and then the other is like the school good boy who is just chasing after the girl of his dreams and so it was just really nice hearing from those three very distinct and different voices but also seeing the ways in which black people kind of create a community for themselves when sometimes the community is not very welcoming and I found all of that 
really fascinating. Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. I read this for the first time last year and it's a well-known book. I think a lot of people have read it but if you haven't I do think it's well worth your time. In this one Nelson Mandela is talking about his whole life essentially, his whole experience growing up as a young boy to how he became someone who was such a figure and cultural icon for fighting back against apartheid in South Africa and I was shocked by how readable this was and how quickly I read such a big book. It gave me a lot of information that I didn't previously have on the political situation at the time, on the history of South Africa, but also in the things that you have to sacrifice if you are truly willing to fight and rebel against a big state that is doing things wrong. Nelson Mandela lost a lot of his life to fighting back and being imprisoned because of that and so it was just really interesting to see how he did or did not manage to balance having a wife, having a family, being in jail, fighting back politically. It kind of unravels and unpacks all of that for you on a platter while giving me all of the information that I needed while being incredibly well written and readable too. For those people who like a little bit of horror I've got to recommend You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Callan Bay on. This is a young adult horror book that I had a lot of fun with. It's a very short, quick read that you can just whiz right through and it's set at a camp where they kind of enact a final girl scenario and you can sign up and go to this camp and like be woven into the storyline. But when people start dying for real it means that our main character, who's a black lesbian, needs to kind of save people and actually may become the final girl for real this time. And I thought this was fun. It was a little bit wild at the end there, but it did all of the things that I really like about a good action-y watch like this that I often see in films. It did the final girl trope very well. It had a bit of a spin at the end and a twist that makes it exciting. And I just had so much fun reading this book for the black main character at the helm. I think sometimes you just need a little silly little fun horror with lots of people dying and maybe a maybe a mix-up of different kinds of horror tropes. I absolutely just have to recommend Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor which was the best fiction book that I read in 2023. It's an Afrofuturism fantasy book where it's set in a world where there's a certain type of race of people that are considered outcasts, that are considered very strange and bizarre, and our main character just happens to be one of those people. She's born from a place of hurt and suffering and anger in the middle of the desert, and she discovers that there is someone who is using their magic to try and kill her, and she's not going to go lying down, so she decides that she needs to learn as much magic as she can, even though people try to stop her from learning magic because she's a woman, and fight back against the person who is trying to kill her and this book was just absolutely fascinating to me. I loved the character work. Onyes Onwu is a fascinating character to follow. She is someone who both feels very outcast and separate because of who she is and the power that she holds within while she still manages to have friends and have a family who care about her and a partner who cares about her too and this book kind of delves into the duality of feeling alone but also feeling like you belong somewhere at the very same time time, knowing you can never truly fit in, but that there are people who still care about you and love you. It did such a good job of the pacing of this. I was never bored, it never slowed me down, and it always slowly revealed the information about the world building that I needed without it over flooding me. I really liked that I could not predict where this was going at any which point. Everything felt suspenseful, everything just felt at the brink of it all coming apart, which was fascinating. The secondary characters were done so very well and I cared about each every one of them. I wanted them all to be safe and okay by the end of the novel, which this is not that kind of book. This is not that kind of book. And it broke me in many ways. I do think you should read the author's note because it makes the story even more impactful that way. If you're looking for a black Christmassy read, I know this is not the season, but you can still add it to your list anyway, I have to recommend Only for the Holidays by Aviola Bello. This is a young adult black romance Christmassy fake dating story, and we're following two teenagers. One of them is Tia, she is from London and she has been told by her boyfriend of a year that they need to go on a break and is reluctantly dragged to this small town in the middle of nowhere to go on holiday with her family. And where she's dragged to is the B&B that Quincy's family run. And Quincy is a black teenage boy whose ex-girlfriend just cheated on him with his best friend. And so he's feeling 
admittedly really sad and betrayed and hurt when this beautiful girl walks into his life and he needs a date for the winter ball and Tia kind of needs a reason to make her boyfriend who wants to go on a break jealous and so they kind of decide that maybe they can find a way to fake date and benefit the both of them. This was so lovely. Quincy is the sweetest, nicest, most genuine character ever and I just really liked seeing him and reading his perspective and his chapters and Tia does such a good job of growing from the spoiled brat into a character that's still herself at the core but also kind of has moved past a lot of the hang-ups that she has. It did a great job of the wintry Christmassy setting and giving all of those wholesome vibes. I'm gonna recommend one more picture books for the parents, guardians and teachers out there and that is The Best of Me by Marvin Harrison and Rochelle Faulkner. So this is a picture book which is full of positive affirmations that you can do with your child that you can say with your child and I just think positive affirmations are such a good practice to have actually and I think as someone who didn't grow up with them they could have been beneficial to me as a child but it also just reiterates a lot of positive messages not only I am smart and I can share and I can help with others which are the basics but also like I know when to rest when I'm ill I know how to restore myself and things like that and all the artwork is black characters as well which is just really nice to see in this type of book so I would just really recommend that for talking about mental health with your children. I've got one more short story collection here to recommend and that is Before You Suffocate Your Own Full Self by Danielle Evans. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because in the grand scheme of things, these short stories don't really have a plot to them. In each and every single one of them is a very insightful look at character building and character work. They are all black characters and they're all going through a different period of their lives, whether that's to do with discovering family, whether that's to do with ending out of school and studying and feeling stuck in this small no good town. There's just so many different scenarios that she carefully places the characters in. And at the end of each short story, while some of them are open-ended, you just feel like you You've learned something by getting to know these characters going through this particular snapshot and moment of their lives and I found that so interesting how it could be such a quiet unfolding of moving parts that really has a deeper effect on me when I was reading them it's hard to explain how this one made me feel but it was special and it was memorable and that's why I recommend this short story collection for the memoir readers I'm gonna recommend none of the above by Travis Alabanza and this is Travis Alabanza's collection of essays on what it means to be trans and non-binary specifically. So Travis Alabanza is a non-binary black working class British person and they've had several different experiences where people have said something to them and they take everything that's been said to them and use them as chapters for these essays where they talk about how that made them feel, what they think about this particular subject and it kind of ties into how they live their lives, how they express their fluidity and their gender and how they express their identity ultimately as someone who is quite intersectional across a lot of different identity factors. and. I just found this so insightful to learn more about what it's like to be trans and non-binary and black here in the UK. Those are experiences that are not personal to me and so being able to read a collection like this just gave me so much more information, not only in informing me on what some people's lives may be like, but also now I've got the tools to better defend and support and be an ally towards people who live those kind of lives. And that's why I think this collection was really important. It's quite a quick read, I think a lot of essay collections can be and I think it's very very worthwhile your time. I have to recommend another Quakey and Mezzy book I know but You Made a Fall of Death with Your Beauty it was just one of the books I loved the most last year and so I need to recommend it here. It's a fantastic summery feeling romance book where it has a bit of a forbidden romance trope to it. We're following our main character Faye who is a widow. She has been childhood sweethearts with the person who passed away for several years and it's been a few years since he has since passed and so he's, she's trying to move on and open herself up to love again and maybe she manages to find love in the most complex of ways in a way that there is no clear forward path ahead but also while it's talking about grief while it's talking about forbidden romance and the complexities of the romantic situation in this one which is messy very very messy 
We've also got a bisexual main character here and another queer character who kind of come together to talk about what it's like to be an adult who may have dependables or who may have people around them who have not quite accepted their queerness and how that can be quite difficult as an adult to navigate and I don't think I really read that perspective in fiction before so that was really insightful and the Quakey Amezi's writing in this is truly lyrical and beautiful and really lovely just really lovely done so I hope you enjoy reading this one because it is such a treat. For non-fiction readers I'm going to be recommending an anthology of sorts but it's all writings by Linton Kwesi Johnson and that's called Time Come. Linton Linton Kwesi Johnson is a black well-known poet but also a musician, an essayist and writer who is black and British and in this anthology of both his like reviews and his poetry and some of his like experiences of his own life he talks about what it means to be Jamaican British here in the UK. He lived a significant portion of his life in Jamaica and through those sections I just got so much insight into the Jamaican experience and Jamaican history which which I was personally really invested in reading a lot about because I am British Jamaican myself with Jamaican heritage but I've never lived there so it just felt like I was really connecting and gaining a lot of insight through reading those sections but then he also talks about what it meant to be post Windrush era here in the UK growing up and people's reactions to like racism and black people and how he slowly learned to feel comfortable with the British side of his identity as well and a lot of that felt very true to form this and Anthology, I felt like it did such a good job of kind of encompassing a lot of the cultural identity factors. I learned about books and music that are tied to my culture and that was through the like review section where he writes essays on music and also poetry and books and literature so you get such a well-rounded perception of kind of the media but also his own personal experience too all wrapped up in one book. More middle grade recommendation I'm going to give you is for a series and that starts with Ghost by Jason Reynolds but it is the track series and in this series you're following these black children who run track whether that's sprint, whether that's long distance or whatever they run different lengths. Then this first one you're following Ghost and he is someone who has fallen into track he didn't originally think he was going to be part of a track team but he does it because he wants to win a bet and he thinks it will help him with his basketball skills and he ends up running sprint but he's also trying to sprint away from a lot of the problems that he has in his life and a lot of the trauma that he's trying to process around what's happened in his family and I really love this series I've read three of the four books so far because I think each and every single one of them in some way or form talk about how running and sport can really help them express some of the emotions that they struggle to articulate and get out otherwise and how being part of this sport, being part of a track team has helped them to better understand the other people in their lives and I think sometimes you can underestimate the power of like sport and emotional growth and development and as someone who grew up playing basketball and have found that to be really imperative to shaping my identity and also like how I how I learned to grow into who I am today I really like seeing that in this middle grade series it's really fun it's really easy to read I think children would like it and I also really love how at the core there is a track team there is a found family and they find support and friendship in each other which is just a really lovely thing to experience on the page but last but not least I need to recommend you Just Saying by Mallory Blackman. Mallory Blackman is a well-known and lauded black British author here in the UK and this is her memoir and in her memoir she talks about growing up black and British here and everything that that pertained, how she fought to become an author and I will say fought because it is quite a journey her trying to be able to afford writing which is not really a financially stable thing for someone who comes from a working class background or a lower socioeconomic background, how she had to battle against racism to get her stories out. I know her because of the Noughts and Crosses series as many people here in the UK do and it does talk about like the story behind her writing a lot of her books and how they came to be but I was also equally unaware of her disability and she talks about that and some of the negative experiences and the way racism has manifested in her medical experiences and I do think talking about being a black woman and using medical practice is sometimes overlooked or not explored enough and so the honesty that is in this memoir really 
really hit home for me and I felt very angry reading this book, very sad but also very hopeful and uplifted as well and I find it to be quite an important memoir. It's also not the longest one out there so it could be a very good audiobook read or a quick read for someone who is interested in it. And there you have it, those are 20 books by Black writers. I hope that there's been something in there for you. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you have a book by a black author that you would like to recommend to me or recommend to other people watching this video and I'll also leave links to the other years that I've done this if you're looking for even more recommendations of brilliant books by black authors. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say. Moments and upwards. Excelsior!